as you probably know, here on this channel, like on a lot of other channels of English people and Americans living here in Germany, I've spoken to you quite a lot about the virtues of public transport in Germany. Um, as you can see, however, I'm sat here in my car. I think the transport system is great here. The public transport system is great here, particularly here in the Ruhrgebiet and the Ruhr Valley area. I stand by everything that I said. But as you can see, I do own a car. Um, and I'm, in the, I'm recording this from the car because today the car's got to go to what is known as TÜV here in Germany. That's the equivalent of the MOT in the UK. And uh, that's the technical inspection, which comes around here every two years, every one year in the UK. MOT is every one year, as far as I remember. And it's at times like these that I start thinking again, do I really need this car? and started thinking about public transport in Germany again, just how good it is, because obviously when a TÜV comes, comes around, we've got a whole lot of cost, and uh, I'm still very much a user of public transport, so I'm going to have a look at that now. My wife and I actually moved back to Germany in the year 2014. We'd been living in Spain for a while, and when we moved, did move back, we sold our car. We had a car in Spain, we sold the car, and we didn't get round to buying a car for another five years. We bought this car pretty much exactly a year ago. It had one year's TÜV, so it was good for another year. That's obviously due now. A whole load of costs. We're hit with a whole load of costs all at once. I've got to take the car to TÜV. Um, I'm obviously getting a service done, uh, Inspektion in German. Like equivalent of MOT and the service is going to cost 250 that's in, that's if they don't have to do any work if the car's passed and, and they don't have to um, change any parts or whatever so that's 250 euros already and with the car being bought uh, just a year ago it all comes around at once the insurance is up for renew renewal as well so my new insurance policy is going to cost another it's just over 700 euros for the year for us both so we're looking at n nearly a grand a thousand euros just to keep the car running for another year and that's without petrol without fuel costs and uh, whatever else might happen so you start thinking do we really need to spend all this money i really don't drive the car that often and we survived five years without any car we'd, we'd, we'd use public transport for everything we we live in such a great area we live centrally in dortmund we're very well connected all through all through the night basically i will talk a little bit more about public transport on the way back i'm going to drop off the car now at the mechanics and i'll walk back we'll take you um i won't actually be getting on a tram or anything because i have forgotten my ticket do still have a monthly ticket what's called a ticket 2000 here in the, uh, the rural area the uh, area that stretches right down to dusseldorf munchen gladbach and uh in one direction Oh no, in the other area. I'll uh, show a graphic of that somewhere along the line in the video. But I do still hold a monthly ticket and I use it for pretty much everything. Travelling around the cities and between the cities, I find it incredibly convenient. If you are, I find my experience is if you are based pretty centrally in a city, you can get pretty much quicker with the car from one city to the next, from the Hauptbahnhof from the central station to the other central station of the next city quicker than you can by car and the frequency of the regional trains is really great and within uh, the city limits you've got an excellent network of trams and underground trains and even buses uh, as you get further afield more buses so a car really isn't necessary here not at all I wouldn't say necessary so why did we buy a car well my wife always says, yes, we can get around pretty much everywhere, any time of the day. Obviously, as you, as you travel through, through the evening, as uh, you get away from rush hour, the frequency of the trains, the, the timetable, there are less trains, less buses, less trams, etc. But it's still pretty good. The thing that I notice here is that I tend to view the whole transport area, certainly the the Ruhrgebiet is just one one area. If I if I'm looking, for example, to I don't know my favourite artist, my favourite musician is playing a, a series of concerts. I won't restrict my 
my radius to just Dortmund and the surrounding areas, I will quite happily travel by tram as far as as far as Dusseldorf even of an evening, knowing that I can come back with... There's a great um, line, the regional uh, train line from Dusseldorf that takes in Duisburg, Mülheim, Essen, Wattenscheid, Bochum, and then uh, Dortmund. It's really, really great. You can get through the night, the trains through the night at least once an hour. And then there's even um, the, what's called the S-Bahn, which stops at more local stops. So you're even well served if you're sort of on the outskirts. You're not just looking to travel to the center of Bochum. Bochum, for example, there's uh, two stops for for Langdrea. You've got um, many stops just between the towns of Bochum and Essen. Stiele, Stiele, Ost, Bochum, Ehrenfeld. So lots of regional stops. You're not just, it takes a lot longer traveling by S-Bahn, but you're not just um, dependent on traveling to the, the city centers. My wife, Connie, she was always keen to get a car because she says, you know, traveling back late from places every now and again through less desirable areas. Obviously as a, as a woman, it's different. She's a little more vulnerable. If she was traveling on her own, she'd, she'd want a, a car sometimes just to, um, be flexible and, and travel back late from from somewhere and I think the the turning point came um, last year when I started playing in a band again I sing play guitar in a band and our practice room is in Castro Brauxel now that's with the car from door to door it's something like if the traffic's okay it's 25 minutes sometimes even quicker 20 minutes if it's really really free but 25 minutes half an hour maybe from door to door the journey just from the main station to the main station Dortmund to Castro Brauxel much quicker by train and it's even um, quite easy to get to it's walking distance from the station on the other side so there's really no need for me to have the car but I noticed that I was depending on the other lads when it came to transporting heavy equipment amps and stuff and the trains get rather infrequent I think they're still we, we practice in the evening it can sometimes be 11 or even midnight 11 at night midnight before we finish so the trains are getting less frequent at that time and it's kind of nice the flexibility I just hop in the car I don't have to look at the timetable I just jump in the car and get back but again I probably wait a maximum of half an hour even if I didn't look at the the train schedule there will be a, a train and it take me 15 20 minutes to bitte schön take me 15 20 minutes or something actually to get back to Dortmund and I can't even even walk or get a get a an underground train uh, home on the other side so <clears throat> absolutely necessary no um, I'm still very much a believer in a uh, public transport still use it I still insist on paying for the monthly ticket that I have I think it's worth it even though we have the car certainly in some situations here in the built-up area like um, the Ruhr Valley it's um, more convenient and easier to use the the public transport sometimes it's just really not worth it if you're traveling into the city centers and stuff like that really you should use public transport as you can see, we've arrived. I will <clears throat> switch backwards and forwards between myself and Office Richie, Studio Richie. He's got some more scientific data. He's got some um, statistics for you. I'm just talk I'm going to be talking to you here about my, my feelings, about my own um, subjective experience with public transport. And we're going to drop off the car now and I'll uh, walk you back home we can see if we can see some trams or buses and see what it actually looks like in real life on the way back we'll be walking and talking and we'll be carrying on this little chat yes i have indeed got a few facts and figures for you here that i pulled up on the laptop um, i'm quoting a source here german sustainable mobility dot de a website about obviously german sustainable mobility public transport their section on public transport apparently an average of 30 million passengers use public transport every day in germany 
the numbers are growing. Between 2004 and 2013, the total number of yearly public transport passengers increased by 9.6%, 1 billion to 1.9 billion. Germany's integrated networks of long distance and regional trains, as well as trams and buses, are the backbones of urban mobility. And pretty ties in with my pretty much ties in with my experience. I would just say in the cities you really need public transport. An established regulation system and national, regional, and local funding provides the reliable base for one of the world's best public transport systems. Probably is definitely one of the uh, probably definitely one of the world's best public transport systems, and I think. Um, you can do you, the only thing you can do here is compare. I know a lot of Germans do complain about public transport and the trains not being uh, on time here. But I'm obviously coming from um, a UK point of view, having grown up with um, seeing the railways and the public transport privatised and run down in the UK to a state where they were really n not very good at all. But I imagine if we went all went to Japan and we saw the public transport systems there and the efficiency of the, the networks there, we'd probably all be really amazed. And I imagine we'd also find uh, Japanese people complaining that the trains don't run on time. Or maybe not, I don't know. Anybody having any experience with Japan? I've never been there. Would love to go one day. Right, so we're done there. Handed over the key and uh, should all be done by six this evening. I managed to uh, be convinced they managed to convince me that I needed to have the air conditioning serviced apparently that was also due it's another 90 euros seems to be working fine but might as well get everything done I'm also getting a, a new radio put in um, something like this so old the car's so old it's 19 years old the car we've just got a, a really cheap car um, with a nice, and the radio's got an old cassette deck in there um, so I'm getting something with uh, Bluetooth and a USB thing. Yeah, so normally if I had my ticket with me, I would uh, be hopping on a tram here. You see there, there's tram lines. So you see in, in uh, Dortmund, very really well connected. There's, I think there's a stop just, just up this, this way. I'm hoping I'll probably be at home uh, in 10 minutes or so. I'll probably have to change somewhere um, at Central Point. Stadtgarten, um, but it's really uh, a good network. So as I say, my feeling is that, well not even a feeling, I've, I've proved it. We lived here for many years, we, we, we lived quite centrally and we proved that it was it's perfectly doable without your own car. Um, we got the car for a bit of convenience, a bit of flexibility in special uh, situations. When we go out, maybe to a, another city, um, Connie likes to take the car if it's at night, if we're going to be getting back really late. Um, I will always take the, 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 the tram, the train, pretty much, unless it's something where I'm going to be carrying equipment or you, you want to go, I don't know, go to Ikea and buy some new, um, new furniture, stuff for the house, whatever. So I'll let uh, Studio Richie, he's got there with his finger on the pulse with all the data, all the statistics. Um, I'll let him pull you up some, some information about public transport in Germany, do some research, research. Going back to the source, the German Sustainable Mobility uh, website, they also say that German authorities require public transport to meet the most up-to-date emission standards. So taking um, cows out of the, the towns is necessary to meet the emission standards, the European emission standards, and um, it really has made a difference to the air, the air quality in the cities. But at the same time, this is very interesting, if you see the other side of the coin, this is from the VDR, VDA, this is the association that represents the automobile industry. They say that in 2014, the car was still the preferred mode of transport in Germany. 80% of passenger transport is still in cars. Um, the website statista.com also backs it up when talking about the daily commute. They talk about, um, based on recent surveys, commuters use a variety of transportation modes to get to work, school and university. The most used of these is their own house household car, followed by public transportation. Many also hop on a bike, but the car is still very much ahead. And the prediction from the Faudi R is that in 2030, as late as 2030, 
it will still be the car will still make out make up 79 percent of passenger transport and there's a very interesting point here they say experts assume that the population of the five largest german cities will increase by 10 to 30 percent and i'm a big believer of using public transport in the cities i find it very convenient and very it's a lot more practical than driving your car through the city i just find it stressful in a car and in parking spaces i don't see the point in the built-up areas like this but um there's also a trend towards lots of e-commerce, so ordering things online and having things delivered. And this strong growth in online retail sales has led to an above average increases in delivery transport in cities. So there's more delivery vans coming into the city. And that's something we don't necessarily think about as normal commuters, as normal passengers. We're not in, working in industry. So that's obviously from the point of view of the automobile industry. And they are looking at... Um, their opportunities to keep selling cars basically to make money by selling cars um, let's hope that the development goes into more sustainable environmentally friendly type fuels solar powered and whatever but uh, obviously that's the very interesting statistics from that point of view the car is still the chosen mode of public transport i'd love to hear what it what's it like for you are you very dependent on your car do you use public transport where are you from in this world first of all let's uh, compare and contrast and also if we do something with the dogs we've got uh, a, a boot where we can chuck the dogs in the boot and go to a park that's maybe a, a bit further out of one of the lakes around here or something it's uh, less easy to ac access by public transport and also dogs are very welcome in the in the trains and the trams but um, it's can be tricky if it's full one of uh, the days Daisy you've seen in another video she can get a bit nervous when she's traveling so I'd say I think on average we, we use the car maybe once twice a week I'm lucky enough to work from home so I don't need to take the car to work we use it once or twice a week I'll drive to band practice once a week and then we'll um, have a, a, a trip out somewhere with the dogs or whatever and, and of course when we're not living with a stranger virus and there are lots of concerts and events we like to go out to see comedians, bands, uh, obviously football as well. Um, football matches, I will always, always travel by uh, tra train, public transport to uh, football matches, no matter how far it is around here. And if it's a, a long uh, away trip, I'll tend to get the bus. I do like the trips um, by train to um, away matches. Those, those can be a lot of fun. You get to see the the other city, but quite a lot. I've recently have been travelling on the on a bus organised by a fan club. Uh, it just takes you from door to door, very convenient, uh, very quick. With the downside that you don't actually see anything of the city. I do like to do a bit of tourism when I'm I'm travelling. Not just drive to the ground, watch the game, and drive home. So I find that a shame. If you if you're somewhere where you've never been before, it's nice to have a look around. What's your feeling? What's the public transport right like right, around you where you are? and uh, do you use it do you um, commute maybe uh, using public transport do you own a car can you get to work by public transport or do you absolutely definitely need your car or is it just a, a luxury i have to say i'm feeling it again feeling it as very much as an expensive luxury today feeling it in the pocket that's over a thousand uh, euros in the space of a month just to keep this uh, bit of flexibility ticking over but at the same time i have to admit i pay something like it's just short of 80 euros for my ticket to um, use pu public transport and um, if i probably paid for all my individual journeys i probably wouldn't spend as much as 80 euros on there but it's a it's a convenience thing i like the the flexibility that it allows me particularly when you look at the area that it covers uh, the 80 euros allows me to travel 24 hours all the way through the area that belongs to Dortmund. Dortmund is a little bit more expensive than some cities because it's um, larger. It's broken down into three uh, categories, three areas, whereas some cities are, are smaller. It's a, a category A ticket, or A3 in this case, because it's slightly expensive. It allows you to travel through the ho your whole home city. And then of course you've got the added benefits of being able to, after 7 in the evening, you can travel all the way through this massive area right down to Mönchengladbach, 
ähm, dann ist es auch Recklinghausen, Oberhausen, Duisburg, Unna, even uh, parts of Holland uh, are in included in that. Um, so it's really flexible. You can also take another adult with you. It doesn't have to pay. That um, applies after 7 p.m. every day and also at weekends and uh, on national holidays. So it's really, really a decent deal. I think, to be honest, um, it could be cheaper. Could be cheaper. But um, it's pretty well regulated. The networks are very well integrated. It's comprehensive. You, you have one ticket for one public transport system. That includes trams, trains, buses, everything. You don't have to worry about whether it's a, the right company. You don't have to worry about whether you're allowed on that particular route like you do in the UK. I hate it in the UK when you go and buy a train ticket and you've got to select. You don't just select your destination and take the, the route that, that's best for you. No, you've got to make sure that you're traveling on the right train from the right private operator and there's a different price for different routes and so many different prices for uh, different times of day. I find it really, really uh, confusing and inexpensive also. So this here would be your typical uh, overground tram station. You see there, it says, there's a sign that says Stadtbahn. The U stands for underground, as these are also, this is the same networks that are connected with the underground network further out from the city they are at a uh, street level but they then disappear into tunnels as you get further into the, the city See right there, we've got the electronic um, signs that show you exactly what the next tram is, and also um, that's the, showing you the, the, the tram line that's being serviced now. And then you see here, there's two different lines. I don't know how well you can see it, but that tells you exactly how long you've got to wait till the next tram comes. There's two lines here: the U41 and the U45. And you see, I don't know if you can see that, but the next one's in five minutes. The one after that in nine minutes and give you some idea of the frequency of these things. Immermannstraße Klinikzentrum Nord. Uh, stop here. No timetable for you, for you. I was going to have a look at the timetable. But, you know, it looks like uh, each line is being serviced at uh, with a frequency of 10 minutes. Every 10 minutes there's a U41 and every 10 minutes a U45 and they're staggered and they will service quite a lot of the same stops. So you can hop on one and probably get uh, into the city with both of those. Probably the most characteristic site in the Ruhr Valley area. Uh, every street corner has a kiosk, or as we refer to them here, Bude or Trinkhalle. A typical uh, inhabitant of the Ruhr Valley needs access to his beer, bottles of bottled beer, round the clock. This is something that seems to be very fashionable in these days. Something I've never tried yet. I don't know what it is. I've, maybe you've tried it. It's a, it seems to be a very special African type of coffee. Um, let me know what it's like if you've tried it. Coffee Togo. So you get it everywhere these days. Okay, so I'm now entering the 
well-known no-go area of the northern part of the city of Dortmund, Nordstadt, as it's known. Um, absolute no-go area, as uh, everybody knows. I'm gonna stop the video here. Obviously, you can't uh, walk around this area with a, with a camera without getting robbed or murdered. Um, but I'm gonna defy logic, and I'm literally gonna go into the no-go area. I, I can feel it coming. This is a topic for another video. That's another one for another day. I'm literally gonna go Look at those feet. Those feet are gonna take me into the no-go area. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please do like and subscribe to the channel. Also, if you want to support me further, I have a Patreon channel. You can click on the link that's gonna be shown on the screen now. Support me further there. I do a regular monthly Q&A for all your, answer all your questions. Collect a lot of the questions that I get on YouTube and also pat patrons, supporters over there on the Patreon channel get priority and get to ask me the, all the questions you want to ask. And I do a monthly video on that. But otherwise, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you again here Mondays and Thursdays, regular videos on life in Germany as an Englishman, life in the Ruhrgebiet. Thanks for watching. Take care. Mach's gut, Leute. I'm here busy editing the video and uh, the phone call came from the mechanic. They've done the uh, inspection, they've done the, the checks and of course there is quite a lot wrong with the car. The brakes at the front, uh, indicator lights etc etc etc. So we've got a new, new grand total. We've got apart from the insurance which is going to be 700 euros, the uh, service and the uh, MOT TUF, as it's called here, was going to be another 250 around that. Um, with all, they're going to do all the work, the brakes, brake lines, the brake pads, etc. Do all that straight away, which is good. They've got all the parts there, no problem. But we're going to be uh, have another grand total of 750. So just to keep the car running, it's going to be another 1,500. And uh, Luckily, there's a good side to the story. They've um, had a look at the radio. They're going to put me a new radio in. Um, that's relatively cheap. That's just going to be another 100. And it's uh, going to do everything that I want. You see why I like public transport, though, hey?